So good day. This week we shall be doing the section of your design for your ideal bedroom. So we have just finished our second or probably even more iterations for some of you and it's time to do interior section of your room. A good way to start if you are just novice with this is all, all the time is really to reference from something. So this is a book that is found in our library, in which case you cannot go, but uh, I will be providing this. So this is a drawing, a, a book about drawing for interior designers. Books are, are great at inspiring and informing. So if you look at these sketches, these are the initial things that you need to do when you're trying to think of about design or a way for you to to actually record your thoughts. Yeah. So when you sketch something, it's, it's mainly thinking about it and then even reacting to it. By reacting meaning when you start jotting down your ideas or sketching out your ideas and then you look at it and you reflect on it, 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 it forms this loop of thinking or, or the, about the design and what you want to put and you start thinking about it's the best thing so here in this book you could find certain things like exercises and materials that you would need okay what is a section basically what you're going to be doing is is you're halving your room into a segment or a section and you're looking inwards so this is another orthographic drawing our drawing system that we're going to imply. So what is it that is important when you do sections, when you present sections, is that you are showing the z-axis of your design. So when you, when you present your plans, it's mainly for the purpose of the axis x and y. So the floor plan is shown, the layout. But when you're dealing with sections, it's mainly to illustrate the Z and relating it also, of course, the uh, what's inside or what design was uh, a, a visual presentation of the design itself when you're presenting this to someone. So here is a, an example of a fleshed out or rendered section. So it's, it's rendered in watercolor. It's, it's pretty nice. But what it talks about here also in this, in this book that is you illustrate details of even the furniture to present the intentions, of course. So the furniture is based on the layout that you have already accomplished. And of course, the furniture is connected to the activities that you have already determined in the first part of your design process. So... Of course, the layout of your bedroom as such. And you could probably even enhance this with this reference. It starts out with the floor plan if you're trying to illustrate the layout or you're trying to start out with the design. So this is basically showing you what the floor plan is. So in this, in this example here, it's showing you the layout of a bathroom. So this is a segment of a floor plan of the space. With even um, with showing the staircase, and this is probably going up. So this is two sto multi-story type of building, and this example is is showing you more detailed, uh, a bigger scale of a bathroom. All the fixtures and furniture that you see here is exact or or uh, reference from the real thing. Now, nothing beats illustrating something that is more realistic when you're trying to draft something or you want to illustrate something. So if you're going to be doing, you know, just, just stuff that are not proportioned or not scaled, it becomes a very uh, useless joy. I know it's a hassle, but uh, <clears throat> again, if you are illustrating something it has to be scaled. It has to be realistic enough that the size, in terms of the size, um, if if really, if you don't practice this, 
and you always fall into this bad habit of just sketching something that without reference or an idea of the exact dimensions of something then it it really is a waste of time so you can find a, a lot of uh, references here for the details like even even uh, showing up uh, all the tiny things the accessories that you could you could even place like uh, books or flower vase but of course this needs to be corresponding to the layout plan that you've already established so we cannot go on and, and try to say uh, make up stuff that are not in the layout. So you can see a lot of examples here. And of course, the book goes on to the oblique types of drawings or the parallel or um, types of drawing here. So this is going to be taught to you later on in our form three when we do perspectives or three dimensional drawings. So we go on to <clears throat> what I have so far now, if I try to take this into another layer. So this is what I have so far. So I, I, I didn't do the drafted version of this. I could probably show you how I would, would section this. One thing um, uh, a lot of students would try to avoid doing is, is really avoiding the toilet and bath because it's, they don't want to do the, the details of, of many things. How do you tackle this? Okay. So how do you do uh, the details if you don't know how to do them? Is, is really, again, it goes back to, to really researching and taking a look at references, looking at pictures, looking at uh, magazines, uh, looking at standards. There's not really a whole lot of, for you to be excusing yourself from not doing a, a good, a, a better job at doing the right proportion drawings of the furniture or the inside. So I, what I'm thinking here is, is really, um, first, we need to establish where do you want to section. So I'll be asking for two sections that you need to do for this week. A section would be a cut out of a segment of the space that you are illustrating. So in this case, I want to illustrate, okay, so I'm doing a, I'm illustrating here a, so this one, this is more of like a, center line type, a short dash and long line type of lines. So I'm, I'm not, you can do it all the way here if you want to. And then I shall put letters onto these. So this is section through AA. So what the arrow means would be, it's showing that the, the direction of the view later on when you're going to do create that section. So this is the direction that a person is looking towards right now the other one the other section would be the longer one would be through this window probably i'd like to show more of the workspace because i wanted to show the the, the shelves here so therefore i'm going to be showing it the here from here and then i put an arrow like that so this is going to be b and then going through probably here and through the TV, that would be B. So this is going to be section through BB. The other one is section through AA, A dash A. So normally that's the, the in, in, in architectural drawings, that's how we name things like, uh, the designates something. So, so sometimes the project is, is really large and vast. And uh, it the section lines here are not always continuous. If you notice that I, I did not continue the lines in the B and B, but rather I just shifted it a bit because I wanted to show where the through the TV. Okay, but but normally if if this is just a a, a really short small uh, or a, sh a, sh a, sh a short distance, I could usually just illustrate the entire section line uh, designation as such. But in vast projects, you need not have to do the entire line. So this is more of a, a center line. So I'm going to be using a center line type. So that's with the small dash. So now I've established the sections that I want to do. 
So I'm going to rotate this a bit here, like so. So I'm going to start out with the section through BB. And later on, I'll, I'll cover the section through AA. Okay, things to keep in mind when you're doing sections. So later on, you'll be projecting these. So you need to reference your section with the plan. Create first where my interior finished floor line. So I'm going to use the scale. Okay, I'm going to be using the, the scale bar, which is here. I'm going to use a 2.7 meter. Okay, normally, okay, that's, so that's a ceiling. And if I illustrate a person, it's roughly about 1.5. So it's a person's eye level is going to be here. So normally, a, a, a an interior bedroom ceiling height is normally about roughly about 2.7 meters. It really depends on also what the intention of the spaces are. Ceiling heights differ from different spaces. How do you determine the ceiling heights of spaces? For example, the more public a space is, there needs to be a higher ceiling. The more private or intimate a space is, the lower the ceiling. So normally, it's it's 2.7 meters for houses. But then for intimate spaces like bedrooms, it could go as low as 2.4 meters. So 2.4 meters, you can vary this, okay? So it would be strange if the bedroom has a higher ceiling. Higher ceiling would are strange because psychologically, you, you, you feel like but it's a strange thing because the lower the ceiling, when you're laying down, for example, if this is the bed, this is roughly about 0.4 to 0.5 meters. So let me just project the, the bed here. So it's going to go down. It's going to be here. So I'm going to project that. So I'm, I'm doing a line here that I'm, I'm sketching first. So that this is the bed. So that's that will be the pillow. This would be the bed sheets. And it would be raised up and it would have feet roughly here. So this is a 2.7. Um, this could go lower as, as 2.4. So that would be another difference of 0.3. This is somewhere here. Now, if you're laying down, this is more intimate and more safe like feeling. If it's a 2.4, then something that is 2.7 meters. So imagine if it's going mo more than three meters, it'd be strange because it's 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 kind of scary. That's that's all I I could I could describe it because if you take a look at children, they would rather be somehow having this this cave like um, uh, environment when they want to sleep because they feel safer. Um, same same way as as here. This would a big difference in terms of uh, your the feeling of safety when you're asleep or the comfort of the comfortable feeling. So you could you could probably lower this and um, by two point four if you want to. The bathroom it could be the same thing. A two point four meter ceiling for the bathroom would would be nice nicer because it it terms. Again, that safety, the nest type of, of uh, feeling that you have in, in terms of when you're you when you're in the bathroom is is really uh, makes a big difference. So in a more public space or say the vis visitors uh, area here, if you have some um, if you have that, it's a two point seven would be okay. A workspace two point seven would be okay. So here I could I could probably lower this. And I could have like a, a light cove. Here you could illustrate your intentions for say where this shelves are. So this is a thicker on the in on the bottom part, and then you do it like this. So I want like shelvings here. So you could probably start erasing this. And then in my workspace, 
I would need to illustrate, of course, the the height of my table would be roughly about 0.75 to 0.8. That would be half of this. It would be here. So the desk. I want some shelves. So I want to reflect the the shelves here. This one. And I want to illustrate it. Okay, I'm gonna align it with that shelf. Okay, has to be reachable. Okay, I want those big built in. Now you could even illustrate, of course, the window that is intended here. So the window, again, you need to kind of research how high the windows are. The cell, the cell for example, is, is roughly about just above the table. This is really up to, up to about probably 0.9 meters. Normally it's 0.9 meters and the window from the sill is normally around 1.2 meters. So that's the roughly about a door's height. So a door, if I'm going to reflect the door here, is about 2.1 meters, excluding of course the frame. The frame is about 0 0.05 all around and this is the door. So I'm even indicating, of course, the head and mind. So a door is usually illustrated as such. Uh, so that's the ground. This is a door panel. You have a doorknob there. Of course, the opposite side of the doorknob is where the hinges are. It's going to swing. And normally, when you indicate a door, you would, the door swing, where it's pointed here, that means this is where it's going to hinge. And of course, a 0 0.05 all around is the door jam. I'm just illustrating here, not to scale, right? That's where my door is. Now I could even illustrate beyond this, of course, is where my cabinet are. So it's going to, and then those sliding things. Okay. I'm going to use lighter lines later on to illustrate these. So the bed is here. You may opt to not to um, illustrate the bed, but instead, you can illustrate the bed in hidden line form. Say, what is this? Why would you want to do that? Is because you want to illustrate the cabinetry here. So this is going to be where the wheeled. I want some shelves there. I want some openings here. It's going to be cabinet doors. Show where the swing. And then my bed is going to be, oh, it's, it's shorter than I. I illustrated it first, but um, it's going to be in hidden line form. And also the sofa here, the seat that you're going to, to create. So this is going to be what, okay, there's a ceiling up first on the outside of the room, but you don't go beyond here. Okay, so this is going to be a more of a bold line type. And this is going to be, uh, these are going to be lighter lines or thinner lines when you're illustrating this. So whenever you, you cut through walls, you are going to illustrate them in thicker lines or bolder lines. So if this is, is going cutting through the wall, the flooring should be like this. So that's a sketch of the seg uh, the, this section. So for the other section, I'm going to be pro projecting this here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lighten this up. Okay, normally th these things are done with tracing paper or translucent paper or things like hopia paper. But later on, I'll show you how this methodology is when you're just using normal paper. Of course, establish the, the ground line. Make sure that this is roughly about 2.7 2. meters. So refer to your scale. 2. Point. Okay, so I'm lowering the ceiling of my bathroom. So this is going to be the wall. And then that. And this is going to be my workspace. Okay. And then these are the walls for the exterior. 
right? So this is the interior of the bathroom. If I draw a person, he or she would be standing like this. So I drew the second version of my design. The, of course, again, this is the NGL on the outside, NGL. So this is the bathroom. Let's say I'm going for this one. So the, it's going to be point, this is the water closet. Eventually you will get used to drawing these things in freehand and in scale. Of course, measured is always key. And then what would the bathtub be? Okay, the, so the bathtub is going to be here. I'm going to project this down. It's going to show this like so. So I'm cutting through this. And then of course you could show the windows already when you where the windows are located. Normally the upper part of the window is about roughly about 2.1 meters. And here it's a shorter upper window because you don't want anyone from the outside seeing you. I want a wider type of window. So I could have these three windows. And then they hinge the on, so the of course they would have a frame of uh, roughly about two inches or 0 0.05 meters. So th these are the windows. I want them to be lower, right above that. Uh, normally this is roughly about 1.8. So therefore this is 0.4 meters. So all these are the bold lines and then of course everything else uh, when you're not cutting through walls or the furniture you're not cutting through walls it would be a thinner line. So I'm going to be using a 0.1 uh, millimeter type. So these are my this is where my desk is. Of course again always reference from real from references. Of course this is where the window is here boulder line for the walls when you're cutting through so this is the built-in and these are my shelves again re reflect your from what you've already done and then of course put accessories like flowers books and the like you can place in the windows here it's going to be nah, there, 0.9 meters. They probably have three bays here. So this is where how I start out my 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 ideas on what um, before drafting. Um, it's always good to to uh, sketch in scale and or in proportion what you have so you, when you sketch you don't get scared uh when you make a mistake it doesn't matter you're not perfecting it but uh, you're but then you are in sketching in scale so you have a, a layout of um this is section through a dash a so normally that's is what you are going to call it one scale one to 50. And then you could, of course, label this a section DH. Okay, so I'm going to erase that through B dash B scale one is to 50. No, that's how I, I, how I tackled creating these sections. So that would be that. Now let's move on to uh, showcasing how to, to do this in drafting. <laughs> 